for those of you that don't know, um, I don't want to bring the mood down too much, but you've not been very well. Um, you and I sat in your garden having a cup of tea and a biscuit for three hours, and you told me everything had happened. And we, I had a little bit of an inkling because you packed up at Hensford, and then I saw you with the game there, and you broke the news to me that you'd not been very well. Now, we, we don't want to go through all that again, because I saw you ring the bell. Yes. So, which made my wife cry, brought a tear to my eye, and you were uh, uh, emotional as well. So, very quickly, how are you? I'm there. Uh, I'm really good. I'm really good. Um, probably shouldn't be. Um, but the whole positive outset where I am with my mind at the moment, I'm, I'm in a good place. Um, it's been hard. I had to just walk up here now. Just like, just being around the club and seeing people's faces. It's quite emotional. Yeah. It is. Yeah, well, I love having you back. I mean, you're, you're such a big character. I mean, I've travelled with you on the team coach, and God knows what the people in the car behind saw uh, with your backside hanging out and running, <laughs> out, yes. running up and down the blooming coach with no clothes on. And, uh, and, and so, when you weren't very well, your spirit is probably the thing that, apart from the brilliant medical care that you've had, that has seen you to where you are now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it was tough, you know, I've been poorly since probably about November, October, November. There was, um, I thought I had an infection, uh, they diagnosed it all wrong, and I was trying to fight this off and carry it Hensford. And basically, March the 13th, I got a phone call. You know, you, you've got cancer, and uh, at that point, the whole world sort of fell apart. I've got a young daughter, she's 17, and uh, a lovely family around me, you have to tell them that news. And uh, I sort of very quickly said to myself, what, what should I do? You know, in this situation here, I need to be strong and show my character. And uh, how long can I sort of keep that going on for? So I said that right at the start to Darcy, who's my daughter. I said, look, we'll sort this. Aidan told her, you know, it's invisible. We haven't got cancer. It's completely invisible. And quickly sort of took to Twitter, sort of voiced out there that, you know, I'm okay, get behind me. And uh, I've seen it in the paper, you know, how good that was for me. You know, the football world, when you you know when you're in it and you leave it and you're uh, it becomes a bit lonely at times, but that football will never 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 goes away. People like yourself, Jimmy, the whole of the Nisa, they absolutely got behind me, and a big part of that is because I, I think what I did for the football club, you know, my, my, my character, and uh, you know that all of those things all joined together really helped me get through. And I, I just hope that along that way, I sort of help people on their journey, you know, to sort of stay strong. Well, I mean, and it's incredible because uh, I know that the doctors were telling you to rest and to uh, eat certain things and not to go in the gym and all of that, and you were like, sod that, I'm doing the opposite. Because you have this belief that you could beat this by being Guy Hadlam, and Guy Hadlam was in the gym and walking yards and eating well and enjoying life and having a beer as well. And, and that got you through many tough games out there, and it's getting you through this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I rang up, you know, close people to me. Jimmy was one of them. I rang him up. There's a lot of tears. And I said, look, you know, whatever I do, when my chin's down, you know, give me a bollocking, tell me to get my chin up and get on with it. And people did. People just treat me normal. I didn't want sympathy. And I felt at home here. You know, I came down here a lot. I said, can you use the gym? I wasn't meant to do the gym. We did little bits. Just the wife, we carry a walk in. The day I can't walk, you know, then we've got a problem. You know, when you've got a problem and you're really ill, you'll know about it. And I didn't feel really ill all the way through. There was times where I was, you know, there were difficult days. Uh, but you, you just, you know, I just think it's just the spirit of me that said, come on, you just get on with it. You get on with that. And all those little things together, you know, sort of added up. Uh, don't get me wrong, there was dead times when maybe I pushed myself, I shouldn't have. But that's just sort of, you know, they're the challenges you face, you know, and I'm glad I did. And now you're here. Um because obviously you could have gone probably back to Hensford and uh, you and I spoke quite funny really when you were in the dugout playing at Stratford I was reporting on the game for Stratford against Barwell and you said I'm packing up at the end of this season I do believe you and you did uh, pack up as we I mean the game was in progress and we were having that conversation so I could see that you weren't fully focused and fully committed but you're back around on it and we've already mentioned Darren Acton so what do you see your role here now um, as opposed to perhaps when you're assistant to Jimmy at Barwell? It's really easy, this, this one is, it's, it should be confusing. This, I asked to come in uh, and said, can I be a part of what's going on? Um, if I'm honest with you, I didn't like what was happening four years ago, five years ago around the, the football club. Fair play to Jimmy, he's come in, he's had a lot of challenges, 
And uh, you know, we've been out and had a few beers and played against each other you know, as, as managers along the way and said, you seem to be getting it right now. You've got a structure, there's an organisation, there's loads of support around this football club, there's loads of pillars of strength to turn to. And I said, look, where I am now, I don't want that hot seat anymore at all. That is miles away in the distance, I don't want it. I've got lots of things I want to do in my life. Um, I don't want agents, I don't want players coming to me and all the crap. I want to be, give people something back in football and I said, I'll mentor people. If that's what we want, I'll mentor people, I'll be around anything you want. So he said, work with Andy, come and build that relationship. Uh, me and Andy had a chat. Um, Jamie Kate, come, come and have a chat with him. Kate came up with the fitness and the strength and conditioning. Get to know the boys and just float around and offer that experience. And that is as simple as what it is. I want nothing more. I just want to be around this environment and give back to this football club. And hopefully, that's that next little push down to get where we need to get. And I guess that you can be that guy that goes and, uh, and does the work that perhaps Andy or Jimmy haven't got time for, or perhaps not in a position to, because um, you know you can be the good cop when they're the bad cop, can't you? Yeah, that's um, and, and that's what you, you do really well, and you, you cheeky face, and you go up and go, listen, he's right, you know. But don't take it personally or whatever. Bring all that experience because there are. I mean, it's a, it's difficult, isn't it? Especially when you're not playing as a player to keep your chin up. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be putting an arm around him and leading by example and, and keeping the the squad buzzing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a strength of mine in my, in my work life. It's what I do. Um, at work, they, they, they seem to call me the fixer. We have problems. We go and fix things. And here, what, we have 25, 26 players and staff. Um, loads of other people that want a piece of them eaten, and Jimmy's only got so many eyes and ears and legs, and so has Andy. And they've got to concentrate what goes on there. And hopefully, I'll give them that little bit of space to say, can you go and do that job for me? Absolutely, I'll go and do that. And try and knit things together. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you have to have arms and legs here to be, you know, head coach and, and the manager of a football club. Everyone wants a piece of you. So I'll take a little bit off them. Um, I want all the nice stuff. I don't want all the nice stuff. But I'll have them. Um, there's some good lads here as well that get ignored at times because they're not in the face, you know, so the young lads, I'll have that little bit of time to say, come on, you're going places, do you want to do a little bit extra work, do you want to stay behind, all of those things and give them something to sort of strive for and that's hopefully what I do. And will we see you officially in the dugout or will you be travelling to a away game? I'm travelling, 100%. On the bus? Yes. Clothes on? Clothes on. Listen, that's the things you want to be a part of, they're the things you miss. Um, I do that bit, you know, I said to Jim earlier on, I said, look, sometimes there's games. Go and watch Coverball for me, go and watch Telford for me. No problem. You know, you sort of think, if we've got to go and win on Saturday. So you'll do a bit of scouting, a bit of watching the yeah, position and that sort of stuff. Yeah, you don't want to miss the Saturdays, it's what it's about. But, you know, we're all in it together. You know, it's not about being selfish and you want your face there. I'm, I'm, you know, I will be passionate. If I do see goals going, I'm not f***ing. That's that going to I'll be unhappy. But it's not my role, it's just it's more of a passion, yeah. you know, than me giving people there be no bollocks from there. And when, when you link up again with Carl Storer, Darren Acton, and uh, you know Richie Norman, you know people that have been at this club for years, and then Stuart Elliott and me, and uh, and many others are fans as well who've been around for ages. The ground staff have been around for ages. You know, it's like coming home, isn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. So, you know, I like the crack with it. You know, the fans. I can't wait till we, we get the, the proper crowd here. You know, we've had we've had a a good couple of crowds but you know when we get the real fans here and we see them you, you can sort of interact with them um still being around i used to have the, you know i say it now me and Stuart's wife are a lovely relationship oh, yeah. now yeah. you know <laughs> especially in the way days me and sue um, yeah. so yeah. so yeah. right. me and you and sue too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is i don't want to bring a bit of character you know without taking it away from the lads you know i want to be able to bring that bit of fun and then just sort of stand back and go hey you know they're on it, they're having a laugh. They're having well, you are the one that likes the yeah, you know, touch paper and then retreats, aren't you, and let everyone else sort out the aftermath. A little bit slow these days, but yeah, absolutely. So yeah. that's the plan. I, we are there. We, we, you know, there's, a, there's a great atmosphere. We do have the laugh. We're still getting to know each other, one or two, but you know, I'm, I'm in your face. I, you know, I, I don't take the time to get to know you. I'll put my arm around you, I'll give you a cuddle, I'll whack you in the ribs. And more importantly than everything is that you have taken, you've been part of this club when it's been promoted. So you know what it takes to get promotion and get over the line, don't you? And that's invaluable. Yeah, I said to, because I, I think I texted you and I says, I'm on the bloody keyboard bed and I can't watch this game. Just keep me giving the running commentary. And yeah. I was like, I think actually what you said was, can you give me a shout out on the radio? Yeah, I, that, yeah. uh, I said to Jimmy, can you get the game here recorded for me? I want, I want to see it because 
It was 2012, it was the last time I got a promotion. I was a part of that team, and it's sad. It's really sad. Um, we had brilliant times, you can only explain it when you're a part of it. Um, my time's gone. I really want these boys to understand what, when you do well here, these people love you. Genuinely, absolutely love you. I will never forget those days, 2009, 10, 11, 12, of you're on their shoulders, you're paying the back, you're buying your beers, they're telling you crap, they're telling you you're brilliant, they're telling you everything straight to your face, they love you. But we, we run through walls. And these boys here, if they run through walls and they really get that, that identity back with this book club, which I think we're getting, um, you'll see big things. They're a good bunch. I just want it now, to, I just really want to see it all click together, and hopefully it's this year. Well, and on that note, everyone, it's good to see it back, isn't it? It's Guy Hadley.